faced with a couple of challenges right away, right in the first measure of the Brahms Second Symphony excerpt at letter E. That low E, spend some time finding your satisfying sound for that low E. It's short, loud, and resonant. So practice it several times. And I even suggest that before you go into your audition room, if there's enough um, sound control, noise control, between the warm-up area and the waiting area and the uh, audition room, I would even suggest quickly going over the finger memory of what that satisfying low E sounds like to you. So you get it in your head and in your fingers before you go into the audition room. The second challenge of this measure is the E on the A string. It's not a challenge, that's the solution. You've got two octaves that you have to jump in one measure. And it's very easy to play as long as you put your thumb right here in the crook of the neck and the heel. The middle E is right there on the first finger across from the thumb. And the high E is right on the fourth finger. So you don't have to shift. I even suggest that before you even start the excerpt playing the low E, you already have your fingers down for the other two notes. So you can check the intonation on them and they're already there waiting for you before you articulate. And then keep that D string muted with your remaining mid finger, middle finger. All right. So that way you can get your low resonant, low E, and your in tune, right in the right place, other E's that are above that low E. The next thing you have to worry about is this figure of dotted eighth note, 16th rest, and 16th note. Make sure that that 16th note is very regal. Regal meaning that the 16th note belongs to the eighth note that follows it. So the way to do it is play most of that 16th note with the fingers. For you French bow players, it'll come here. German bow players, it'll come here. And that'll keep it very regal sounding. Next thing you need to worry about is in measure 125, the B, D, A with the dots on them. Resonant, just like a pitz. So that means the bow is letting the string breathe as soon as you articulate the note. Notice I'm on an up bow there, which is a little bit different from the suggested Allstate Orchestra bowings. Do whatever you want. But the reason that I uh, do the bowing backwards there at that point is because it accommodates easily the passage that will come later, so you don't have to do the awkward up, up at measure 132. So that means you have to start this E half note on an up bow. So the drawback then is uh, it's very hard to get the right sound on it, so you have to put an accent on it. So go ahead and put a little bit of an accent in your part on that E half note if you are going to indeed do uh, the bowing that I suggest. That low E, do not honk on it because at this point that will be a down bow. That dot means that it's resonant, but it doesn't mean it's loud, okay? Resonant is short, just like the opening. So play it just like the opening low E. Afterwards, you have a, C sharp, D, F sharp, G sharp, B, etc. Quarter notes with accents on them. Think of these notes as long, melodic singing with a little bit of declamatory accent on each of the legato notes and vibrate. Notice that you have an up bow on the G sharp, A sharp, B, and then a down bow on the descending E, D, C sharp, A, F sharp. 
it really does help if you do that bowing and continue the the legato, the vibrato, with a little bit of articulation to give it a declamatory feel. Next thing, biggest warning of them all for all of you. Measure 135, inclusive of the tide note on the third beat, measure 134, and inclusive of the tide note on the downbeat of 136. You have a lot of counting to do there. Too many people do not count that measure long enough. So count it, put a big note in there, highlight it, do whatever you have to do, count in your head. So many people, even at professional auditions, do not play that low E long enough. You want to be the person that counts it. It will be appreciated. You know what will also be appreciated? Right there in measure 136, second and third beat, you have that forte. That's actually supposed to be a forte that is less than the forte that came before. So, um, it's a weird Brahms marking, poco forte. So make sure that you, you can even think of it as a mezzo forte, really. It's perfectly fine to think of it as a mezzo forte, as long as you play it expressively. So vibrate like crazy. If you can vibrate through your shift, do it. can't vibrate through the shift, that's okay. Vibrate wherever you can and keep vibrating. Don't stop vibrating. I don't care if there's a shift. I don't care if there's a pivot. I don't care if there's a string crossing. Just keep everything as connected as possible as if it's a singer doing it all in one breath until you get to measure 153. After that downbeat A, then you've got a break. Play those eighth notes short and resonant, and don't be in a hurry. And with a nice C-sharp short note that's very resonant. Have I used the word resonant a lot? Yeah, I have. That's because that's the theme of this. Everything just needs to resonate. And the key to resonating is not squashing the string after you articulate a note. And that's what makes Brahms Brahms. Good luck. It's a lot of fun when you figure that whole resonance thing out. Totally changes how you think about bass and bass sounds. Next up is Mozart. <laughs> 